We've had this office sealed up for three days, but we can use it now. This is where we found poor Hummel's body. You can see by the chalk marks the police left. And this is where Adams, the bank messenger, died. Apparently, Adams broke the window to get one last shot at the thief as he was escaping. The newspapers say they found blood out there, Mr. Fenley. Yes, right about where that box is out there in the yard. Adams must have wounded whoever it was, and then just had enough strength to pull that alarm before... before he died with three shots in him. How many shots did Adams fire? Only two. One out of the window and one... Well, the police say that the shot that killed poor Hummel was from Adams' revolver. A wild shot. This Theodore Hummel was your watchman, wasn't he? Yes, Ted Hummel. Fine young man. He was the only one in the plant that early. He always let the payroll man in every Friday morning. Was there anybody but Hummel here to receive the payroll? Well, ordinarily I would be. But last Friday I was a half hour late. The ignition wire was loose on my car and it wouldn't, wouldn't start, I know. That's why it was loosened. You mean say it was... Payrolls perfect? aren't heisted on the spur of the moment by casual passers-by, Mr. Hummel. Whoever hit this place studied everything, from where you parked your car to the size of your hat. How do you figure it? That the bandit, whoever he is, waited until Hummel let the messenger Adams in with a payroll, which he was to turn over to me. Only your car wouldn't start, and you were a half hour late. And so Adam sat there waiting for you, holding the $20,000 in his lap like it was the neighbor's baby, is that it? Yes. And then the bandit held up Adams and shot him. Shot him so seriously that, in resisting, he accidentally killed Ted Hummel, who had come to help him. And before Adams died, he managed to wound whoever it was as he was getting away. Pretty good shooting from this distance. You left something out, Fenway. I did what? The police think it was an inside job. Why? The robbery detail thinks the holdup succeeded because it was well planned. That means it was a finger man. Why did you hire me, Fenway? Who are you trying to impress? The police or the insurance company? Now, see here. Well, I guess I'd better be honest with you, Barnett. We've been careless, criminally careless. I feel that we should do everything in our power to aid the police. I suppose it's conscience, but two fine men have been sacrificed. So far. How do you mean? Whoever gets your killer, Mr. Fenway, is going to find a man armed and wounded. That's generally a fatal combination. We must take every precaution against that. Did you watch when this Mr. Ted Hummel will have any family? Yes. It's right here in the personnel records. He had a married sister, uh, Mrs. Weaver, and a brother, uh, Valentine Hummel. Mm-hmm. What have we got on Adams? Right here. It's photograph and fingerprints. Mm -hmm. May I have this? Yeah, sure. Well, three people know about this for sure. I think I'll start with them. Three people? Which three people? The late Mr. Theodore Hummel, the late Mr. Adams, and the half-hour late Mr. Fenway. What'd you expect, Valentine? Boy, are you a dreamboat. Why don't you shave? No word from Val. No phone call, nothing. It's been three days, Ella. He should let us know where he is. Us or the cops? He's just doing what I told him to in case anything went wrong. 
Now, look, Billy boy, you do the same thing, huh? I'll worry about Val. Yeah, you do that. And I'll worry about the 20,000 bucks that Val's got with him. Wherever that is. All you have to know is that I know where he is. I said I'll worry about Val. I read in the papers about the last two guys you worried about. Brother Ted, six feet under. Brother Val's holed up somewhere with a slug through him. They're only your brothers. Do me a favor. Don't worry about your husband. It ain't healthy. I say what's healthy. What's that for? Same as that. Just to remind you who's running this frolic. Just like I ran the first one and just like I'm going to run the next one. If there is a next one. You bet your sweet life there's going to be a next one. You see these? You know what they are? The bills. You know what they mean? Respectability. You pay the rent, you owe the butcher and the grocer and the cleaners. Make you respectable. And when you're respectable, you can get into places. Sometimes you get jobs that let you stand right next to a safe. That bill's got to be paid. We got 30 thou out of that Kansas City job. I got to pay for these out of what I get in the garage. That's right. And when Val brings in that payroll, that's going in that safe deposit box, too. And we're going to keep on living on what you make. And we're going to keep on owing the butcher. Just enough to make us look like anybody else. Yeah, sure. How long have I got to stay at that garage? Well, let's see now. You've been there six months. You've done a good job. You get references. You know, it's been a tough job keeping you clean enough for investigation. But I did it. Now, the lease runs out on this house in a couple of months. That's reason enough to move. We moved to Bridgeport. There's a big airline garage in Bridgeport. Services armored cars for a big payroll company. You'll odd job around the town a while, and then you'll hit them for a mechanic spot. So I get the respectable job in Bridgeport, like Val had in Kansas, and Ted had up at the Fenway plant. Do I get the 150 buck funeral too, like we gave Ted? Shut up about Ted! I don't know what went wrong. Val will tell us when he sees us. If we see him. He can't come here. He knows that. I told him where to go. With 20,000 bucks, maybe he just touched first base and kept on going. Would you? I mean, would you dare? How about Bridgeport? So I got a job in the armored cars just like that, huh? No, not at first. You have to keep trying. Why not? You're a good mechanic. Make a good appearance. Even if I have to coach you with your Latin, teach you how to speak English. Why don't you shave? Yeah. Say, armored cars. They towed a hundred thousand one of them easy. Say we got one of those and have the other two score. We can go to Mexico, like you said. What you got in your pocket? Nothing. Give it here. I thought I heard you clink when you sat down. Where'd you get it? I bought it, you want to know? Off a guy in a bean wagon for ten bucks. Well, in the morning, on your way to work. Drop it in the river. You're a mechanic. Mechanics don't carry guns. Especially guns like that. Yeah? What's wrong with it? I'll tell you what's wrong with it. That gun's an automatic. And an automatic kicks out empty shells. And the empty shells are picked up by the police and traced the gun to the guy that sold it to you. You know everything, don't you, Ella? The shells come from a service automatic. That means the FBI can get in on the case. What do you want to do, play Wild Willie West with the FBI, you big clown? And Amara, in the river. 
That don't go for your brothers, though. They're different. Yeah. They're different. One of them was real good with a gun. What I mean, real good. I said shut up about Ted. Okay. I'll talk about Val. The $20,000 brother. Where'd you say he was? I didn't. But where he is is the last place anybody would ever look. Just a minute. How are you feeling? Oh, thanks, Mrs. Barker. Oh, I'm, I'm pretty good. You sure you don't want me to call a doctor? No, no, thanks. Thanks, it's the same. The doctor on the plant told me what to do for it. Well, I sure sue that company for a nice dollar. Imagine not putting shields on their machinery. I hope you put in for workman's compensation. Oh, don't worry. I'm getting plenty out of this. Uh, oh, excuse me. Somebody at the door. I'm inquiring about a man who used to live here. What's his name? Names are changeable. If you recognize his face, he was a payroll messenger. Indeed I do, poor man. That's Mr. Adams. Who are you? I'd like to see his room, if you don't mind. And I'd like to rent it. Please let me move his things out. He was a real hero, he was. Killed for trying to protect the payroll like he was. You'd think the company do something for his family. the way the police left it. Leave no stone unturned, they said. It's routine. Well, I said, you unturn anything in my house and you'll disunturn it before you leave. The law says I'm responsible for his effects until I can locate his next of kin. Mm. Uh, you say this Adams had no family? I had the impression he had a married sister out west. Mm, I hope so, poor soul. I gotta send his stuff someplace. What about friends? Did he have many visitors? Well, now I know if he did. He worked funny hours. Rest time he kept to himself. But the only friend he had was Mr. Jennings, the poor man across the hall. Poor man? What's the matter with him? Oh, he was in an accident at the place where he works. He used to cross the hall quite a bit. friends, but he seems to have had a hobby. Well, he was crazy about guns. He used them in his work, of course. The police checked the numbers. He had permits for them. N now, look at here, mister. You put everything back the way you found it. What are those? Hundred-yard pistol targets, match targets, and a ten-shot group right through the bull of each one. Giersdorf Trophy, rapid-fire revolver match for Special Officers, Camp Cary, Illinois, 1949, won by Bank Officer A.T. Adams. Mm. Pity poor Mr. Adams dressed his soul. Couldn't have done as well as this the other day. But I guess he'd gotten rusty or scared. Not that I blame him. They don't put clusters on a silver star for choking up. And he wasn't rusty either. Three of these shooting medals are dated this year. Mm. No, well, maybe it's like I was telling Mr. Jennings what the man in church says. You live for the sword, and you die for the sword. Or a gun, as the case may be. Mr. Jennings? Yes. 
man lives across the hall. The friend of Mr. Adams. He got hurt the very same day Mr. Adams was killed. Oh? What happened to him? Working for the company, doing his level best for him. One of the machines blew up, or broke, and didn't it send a piece of metal right into his arm? His arm? Mm-hmm. This was the same day Adams was shot? Mm-hmm. What time did Jennings get back here? Oh, Lance, it was still morning. He said he just turned his machine on. And, and Jennings used to come over here quite a lot to see Adams? What'd they talk about, you know? Guns. That's all either of them ever talked about when they got together, as far as I could ever hear, uh, gather. Try and remember, did they ever talk about Adams' job as a payroll messenger? Why, I don't know. And this Jennings was his only friend, you say? Hmm. How did Jennings react when he heard that Adams had been shot? Well, now that you speak of it, he was more interested in that poor watchman that got killed. A man with the name of... Uh, Ted Hummel? Yes, sir. He was, uh -huh. huh? I think I'll just pay your Mr. Jennings a little visit. Oh. He doesn't want to be disturbed. He's not well. He's got a very bad arm. That's the only part of that's bad. I'll apologize. Mr. Jennings? You know my boarders are gentlemen. Looks like one of your gentlemen boarders listened to the keyhole and decided to leave. Who's this? Well, that's Mr. Jennings. He shouldn't have gone out. He's a sick man. A big piece of steel went right into his arm. Principles of surgery. Steel, huh? Mm-hmm. scared enough to try this is packing lead. Well, maybe he went to call a doctor. Maybe. But I got a hunch he went to the bank. And I've got a hunch I know where that bank is. What a hideout for a killer. The last place anyone would expect to look. Right across the hall from the man he killed. What? My name is Mike Barnett. I'm with the Fenway Company. May I come in? Well, it depends on what you want. It's about your brother, Theodore Hummel. It seems his company insurance was made out to you. Well, what does the company want to do? Give us a gold medal instead of the money? No, not at all, Mrs. Weaver, isn't it? Yeah. No, the company wants you to have everything you're entitled to. You bet we will. You can tell them that I've called a lawyer, too. You said that Ted would be alive if it hadn't been for that trigger-happy paper. Well, that's just talking. it, Mrs. Weaver. You see, I don't think your brother was deadly killed. What do you mean? I mean he was shot deliberately. You mean Adams murdered him? I didn't say that. Two men stole that payroll from Adams. A man named Jennings and another man. A man Adams knew and trusted. Trusted enough to let him get within ten feet of him. And Adams wasn't trigger happy. He was an expert pistol shot. At ten feet he couldn't have missed. Are you saying my brother wasn't trying to save that payroll? He's trying to steal it? I'm saying Adams knew exactly who he shot. Can you prove it? Not at the moment, but I've got time. Not as much as you think. Bill, who is that? Well, see who it is. Mr. Barnett isn't leaving. It's Val. Tell him to come back. Sis, sis, you gotta get out of here. Jennings. God, he knows something. Get up. Search him. Sis, huh? I suspected Jennings, but it never occurred to me he might be Val Hummel. No, it's a family affair. Nothing. Oh, he's real sick. He must have run part of the way. Fell down, too. He brought the dough, didn't he? Let's put him in the back of the car and get away from here. What do we do with him? He'll just fit at the back of the truck. Who's going to pack me in, you? Even with that big gun, you're not big enough. <laughs> Listen to the brave man. I'll bet Ella could do it, though. 
Anyone who'd kill two of her own brothers. What do you mean by that? You set your brother Ted up for one between the eyes, and this one's got blood poisoning. With that slug in him bouncing in a car, he won't last five hours. We left him in front of a hospital. He won't talk? Not if he's conscious, he won't. But he'll be in delirium soon. Then there's no telling what he might say. Well, we can't just let him... I'll think of something. Of course, you can always shoot him. Oh, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Well, he's not going where you're going. He's going with us. Without that slug. Call a doctor. You're crazy, Ella. He's a gunshot case. Doctor's got to report those. Not this one. Go ahead and get on that phone. I don't know any doctors. Hey, you. You know any around here? Yeah, I know one. Fordham 52598, Dr. Russo. He's a good doctor and he's only a few blocks away. He's not a doctor, hang up. It better not be a trick, Barney. And if he don't scare easy, or if he wants to operate in a hospital, we tell him he does the job and he does it here. Or you get shot. Yeah. He says he'll come right over. It's a break for you. You get to live a few minutes longer. I'm sorry he isn't coming from Brooklyn. That's the doctor. Answer it. Dr. Russo, are you the gentleman who phoned? Yes, come in. Where's the... Um... Oh, hello, Mike. Uh, just a minute. I forgot something. I forgot to tell you who you were telephoning. Dr. Russo's a police surgeon. He always comes complete with two cops. Don't worry, Ella. The city will spend a lot of money getting your brother well, so the state can spend a lot of money executing him. 